physically. I mean, literally, physically literally wanted Ill. to throw up. She she could not <laughs> stomach coming into class, and 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 seriously, uh, you know, I, I have this reputation, but like we talked about earlier, I'm, I'm a teddy bear. I do not stand up and rant about the evils of religion in the classroom. No. I, I talk about this really cool stuff in biology, uh, but it, but it's challenging her beliefs. It's challenging what her parents and her ministry have told them and it's setting up all these conflicts and you can see it in some of the students faces that they are they are seriously stressed and it actually has stressed. a physical effect a physiological effect make them makes them nauseous yes congratulations <laughs> <laughs> i think that's terrific because i mean as you say it's not as though you're actually del insulting their their religion you're simply telling them science no. and that's Wonderful. Yeah, you know, in my classes, I, I actually go out of my. Uh, for instance, this this one class I teach, which is an introductory biology course, and my the first third of the class is all history and philosophy, and we actually talk about the contributions of religion to science, and I'm not talking about it in a demeaning way. I'm saying that you know, you know, Saint Augustine had some good ideas about you know the proper domain of of, of religion and knowledge of the world and so forth. And, and even that bothers them, because I, I think what they see is that here, here's a strategy that's actually tackling them on issues they thought they were safe on. That they were pretty confident that things like philosophy and history were on their side. That Jesus is a historical figure, etc., yeah. and uh, that science has been, or religion has been this great contributor to culture. But you gotta, when you start looking at religion as a, as a philosophy and as a historical player, you're taking away some of the mystery right there. Yes. Do you think that, I mean, I think we both agree that creationism shouldn't be taught in science classes, but I, I think it should probably be taught in history of ideas and... and oh, yeah. And uh, I probably don't have religion classes in D-Word, but I mean... Uh, yes. One, I mean, I, religion is an important phenomenon, there's no doubt oh. about it, and therefore... One I, I agree. Teach. Yeah, if... if if there were a way to do it, if there were a way to actually teach a comparative religion course in American high schools, it would be wonderful, and I think it would really help. I, I, that, that's one of my main a yeah. aims. I mean, why not? Oh, uh, yeah, I it, agree. But there, there's this thing called separation of church and state. Yes. That is enforced. It, is the separation, I'm interested in this, does the constitutional separation between church and state apply to comparative religion? I thought it might only apply to indoctrination in one particular religion. Surely you can teach religion yes. as an anthropological, psychological, sociological, historical phenomenon. Ah, uh, except when you, when you look at the history of separation of church and state, you know, it's, it's initially set up not to protect the state, it's set up to protect religion. Yes. And it's, it's still widely seen that way that uh, what they, you know, th there are attempts now to erode the separation of church and state, but I think they're mistaken from the point of view of, of religion. Because what separation of church and state has allowed is for uh, religions to go unquestioned. That what you do is you get your exposure to religion in Sunday school and in church on Sunday, and nobody questions it the rest of the week. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if you were to, if somebody were, were to propose teaching comparative religion in schools, would the strongest opposition come from secularists from people at like people at this conference or uh, or would it come from religious people that's a hard one uh, but there there are knee-jerk atheists who would oppose it I, I wouldn't be one of them uh, but I, I think ultimately what would kill it is the fact that uh, good little pa Baptist parents would send their good little Baptist children to school and they'd hear about Buddhism and they would blow their stacks yes and that would kill it right there yes uh, all the more reason to do it. Uh, <laughs> well, you see, now, now, you're, now you just scuttled the whole project because I can see Richard Dor Dawkins endorses this, so obviously it's wrong. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I can't do, do anything about that, that effect, yes. that if you, if you and I endorse something. But um, Dan Dennett's very keen on it, by the way, uh -huh. too. I am interested and curious about this idea that... Uh, Strong atheists, like people at the atheist conferences and so on, would would oppose it, and at the same time, religious people would oppose it, um, for I suppose opposite reasons. 
Maybe the first thing to do would be to persuade our atheist colleagues that they should drop their opposition and perhaps divert their attention from um, what, what I think are relatively trivial causes like getting rid of the Ten Commandments from courthouses and, and getting rid of In God We Trust from okay, money no one, yeah. and, and instead divert their attention to something that might actually have some effect like a, a campaign for comparative religion in schools. Oh, well, as you know, you're, you're not going to find unity in the atheist community anywhere. Yes. If we're too different. There's always going to be people fighting those things. Um, you know, but, but the people who are opposing the, the Ten Commandments and who are opposing the In God We Trust on Coinage, they, they actually have some good arguments. that Those, those are strange historical artifacts. Well, I mean, it's absolutely monstrous that, yeah. that, that, the, that it took, I mean, in 1953 or something like 54, yeah. In God We Trust was added to the money. Right. And the Pledge of Allegiance, One Nation Under God, was added at roughly the same time, sometime in the early 50s. I mean, just on historical grounds, the, the idea that, um, that something so recent should now be regarded by so many Americans as Right there with the Founding Fathers, Going back yeah. to the Founding Fathers, yeah. yes. Whereas the Founding Fathers are probably spinning in their graves at both. Well, they, they took a p pretty conciliatory attitude towards a lot of religion. But, uh, yeah, you know, the, the, these are, these are they're, they're little problems, but they're kind of, they're kind of symptomatic. And, and I think you're right that we're, a lot of people, what they're doing is they're focusing on treating those symptoms rather than the root cause. And, and it would be good to have more of us focusing on going right for the heart of religion and going for that instead of these superficial sorts of trivialities that, that yes. are out there. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you know, cleaning up some of the trivialities would be kind of nice. I mean, I, the, the best case I can make for them is, is consciousness raising. I'm very keen on yeah. consciousness raising. Um, uh, I, I suppose we learn the word from the feminists who raised our consciousness about right. word, phrases like one man, one vote. Um, and, and my favorite example of it is the labeling of children with the religion of their parents, which I, mm -hmm. which I think is child abuse. And it's something that you can immediately get people to understand. If you, if you say you would never dream of talking about a postmodernist child, instantly they get it. Yes. And they've, they've had their consciousness raised, and with a bit of luck, they, they will get a little kind of shiver of reaction when, it, when they, the next time they hear somebody speak of a Catholic child or a or a Muslim child. Mm -hmm. And I suppose you could say that Ten Commandments in courtrooms and things, that's consciousness raising. But yes. I wonder whether it's raising consciousness in the wrong way and, and making atheists out to be sort of killjoys and fusspots, yeah. and, and, and objecting to Christmas cribs and, and, and right. things. Um, I think we, could prob we probably do ourselves a lot of harm by making a fuss about the superficial trappings of religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, does, it does make people look petty, that they're, they're not going for anything of substance. But then on the other hand, what do we do of, of substance? What can we do uh, in the public sphere? I mean, personally, we, you know, we, we can do things like, uh, you know, talk among ourselves, try and recruit people to, to the ideas, write books, uh, write blogs, whatever. Um, but there, there's limited things we can actually. Well, we do. could pick on issues. We could yes. say we could say um, things like stem cell research, things like the teaching of of um, evolution. What about the tax free status of churches, which is which has enormous consequences, doesn't it? In, yes, it does. Uh, locally, uh, all, all over the country. Yes. I mean, that's a real big one. Yes. And if we if we're constantly diverting our attention to trivia, like um, I don't know, you know, defacing dollar right. bills or something. We're ignoring the really big things, like Although, the number of tax dollars that these people don't pay. Yeah, but actually, you know, I think there are a lot of atheists who are working on it. I mean, Good. Things like Americans United for Separation of Church and State, uh, which, it was, which isn't an atheist group at all, it's a secular group, but uh, they're working for these. I, I'm constantly getting email from people saying, okay, well, there's this bill before con Congress that we've got to take care of because it's endorsing something or other. Uh, here in this state, uh, the local Minnesota Atheist Group has been working towards getting that, that tax placed back on the churches. Excellent. And there's been a few proposals Good. along those yes. lines. Although, of course, they're, they're not going to be very popular among the electorate. But 